Uh, so hello everyone. I hope you had a very good and great lunch. So today's session is about model-based system engineering and we will talk about different practices. And uh, right now it will be about one particular practice for document generation and requirements management in a bigger project. So uh, I will talk about this project, but first, uh, who am I? Uh, so I have experience in project management for around uh, uh, 12 years, worked for SVSoft or Parallels or whatever, Airbus and lately like for Soft Team for 12 years and then um, uh, with different different types of projects with uh, European Space Agency, Thales, Scania, Volvo, Nokia, SAP and other other others. So um, I have a background in uh, uh, programming or information technologies, uh, worked with Airbus on distributed systems and lately uh, did uh, lots, of, lots of different works around model-based engineering and I'm leading uh, research in this area. Right, uh, so today's session, what we are, we'll be talking about. So first of all, uh, we will poll you and we'll discuss what is the documentation and why are we using documentation. So then I will talk a bit, a very, very short session about uh, goals of the current project I'm working in and so what were the challenges and so on and so how we dealt with those challenges with, uh, with model-driven technologies. Then, uh, like, seeing is believing and so we will uh, see the Modelio demo and I will show you a few things that are quite interesting and you can actually directly use in your projects right now. So then we'll have uh, small conclusions, discussions, uh, so it will, I have only 24, uh, 20, 26 minutes and, but I think we'll be on time for everything and if you need some more information I'll be readily available to discuss that and I will go visit you uh, if needed. Right, introduction. And so this time to uh, get your mobile phone, phones uh, in your hands, because we will poll the audience. Come on, come on. Ah, wrong button. Sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. So it's it's a power button, not XA button. It's so close, so close. It's kind of uh, really, really. I'm so lucky today. Okay. And escape right? this this way. Escape. Work. Okay. Work. Work. Escape. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, 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 and uh, I suggest you to go to manti.com and type uh, 171775, right? And uh, the basic question, how much time and percentage in your project you spent on documentation, right? Just, we will poll audience to see how much time you spent. So just go there, manti.com, and type 171775, and uh, uh, just pick a number. So less than percent of your time, uh, between 11 and 30% 30, uh, 30 of time, more than 30% of time, more than 50% of time, so we'll see how much time do you spend on this one. So it's, uh, I th yeah, okay, so we have two, pe two people, uh, three, so proportion, so, and somebody very lucky not doing it, so we're wondering why we're here, <laughs> so why in this session about the documentation, so, uh, right, so we, you would like to, to, probably you would like to, to spend even less time, yeah, than 10%, so no documentation at all, and one, one person actually, spending more than 50% of time. So, okay. I think it's a good poll, so it's showing a bit equal of everything, so, okay, no, less than, okay. So it's going, going up, up, but okay. So you'll probably spend even less time. Uh, right. So, uh, documentation. So you see um, many, many people, and we see like probably half of the audience, more than half, uh, spends actually more than 10% on documentation, and there is good proportion uh, spending more than 30%, uh, 30% and you can understand this is important, okay? So let's go and, 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 and uh, just poll uh, why, why really uh, this is important. So uh, just, why do you use the, why buy a document? So, so why do you document? Yo, sir, please, why do you document? Yeah. Any, any language, yeah. but I like to type in English. Because you're not, I mean, I have already recorded on my back, so I have to do video. To know, what we, to know what we have done before. Yeah, it's for, for history, it's like uh, keeping track of history, keeping track, okay. So what next, who next? So. What's about documentation? So, yeah. Uh, custom requirements, okay. It's contract, contract, uh, contract requirements. Contract requirements. Just for communicate with my team colleagues? Yeah, Irina, ah, yes, to communicate, to communicate, okay. So what, who else, who else? Future developers. Huh? For future developers. For future developers, yes, it's kind of a letter to the future, okay? Letter, letter to the future. Right, so who else, so, huh? Training. Yes, training, training, very important. Training of somebody, so what else, huh? For testing. Testing, documentation for testing, okay, or test documentation, okay. 
for testing. Is testing. Testing is just uh, testers have to testify uh, requirements too, and also yes. uh, they need some force to know for how exactly testing test. requirements. And this is probably a part of the part of the uh, your software development lifecycle or a process or framework, process framework, process framework, framework, Zork. Okay. Anyways, um, so right. Uh, so and what are the difficulties that you have? to document your system or your project. So what's, what kind of major difficulties you have? So what's that? Time. Time, yes, it's time consuming, yeah? Time consuming. So we can stop here, yeah? <laughs> time consuming. So what else? Huh? Quality, 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 in which sense? Uh, errors, errors, inconsistencies, inconsistencies, what else? Up to date, yeah, inconsistency, yeah, it goes to inconsistencies. Up to date. What else? Understanding, very, very important. Understanding. Their but understanding starts from visibility. Sorry? But understanding starts from visibility. Visibility, visibility of what? In which chance? Visibility. I, I try to explain to my customers, to my colleagues. To stakeholders. My... It should be dedicated different stakeholders. Yeah. Yes. And so reader is a diff diff different. So with this, this is difficult because we, we write a document that is, has an audience, it's a specified audience, and depending on the audience, the document should be different. And we have tons of documents. And so they're so inconsistent at the end. And so it's very, very difficult to manage this kind of inconsistencies, right? So, right. So back to the presentation. Uh, and as we mentioned, okay. Presentation back? Yes. Uh, so why? Why documentation? We said, okay, communication, we said that. So there is requirements, architecture, design, test plans, reviews, reports. It can be contractual or legal binding. So in certification process, you have to have documentation. It's, it is required, sometimes it's required by the process or you want to instill some process within the team and you require certain types of docu documents. Then uh, you have different properties, as we said, stakeholders, right? So reading style, is it a story? I write a book which has beginning and the end or it's kind of dictionary or reference book when I actually can, can uh, randomly uh, circle and f find some, some information. And so there's uh, some different traces, diagrams, formats. It can be HTML, a word format, and so on and so forth. And it's so many doc documents that we should manage for each particular project. So this actually becomes in a nightmare, like in this comics. Right. You don't see that, yeah? OK. So problems, first of all, like consistency. Outdating information, we mentioned all of this, so it's the same problem that actually we are talking today. Uh, maintaining references, so how you reference requirements with change, or uh, how you reference different um, system components in different documents, or interfaces. So formatting, so I mean, we have hundreds of people working on one particular document, and uh, how do they all like write consistent and structured documents in the same way as a human would, would do, and how you manage that all is consistent? Do you have a team or those who just format the documents? Or so is it one person or whatever? Uh, and how do you re reuse different parts of different documents in the other documents? So you just copy paste that, but oh, sorry, it's outdated. So this one is outdated. So how, I, how you, do you um, spend all of, all of those things or manage all of the things? Okay, so. What we propose uh, in this particular talk is to use model-driven design. So what's model, okay? Models can be uh, prescriptive or kind of descriptive. They describe, okay, this is a, 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 a task, uh, coffee cap, yeah? So from different angles, so it's abstraction, which can be descriptive or prescriptive, a, a blueprint. So I can build from the model something. And actually, I can build documentation out of model, right? So, and uh, if you a bit aware, so just a few glances, from model-driven development approach. So you start uh, with requirements and analysis, this all models, and at the end you generate something useful out of your models. You spend more time in architecture, designing, and so on, and spend less time on debugging uh, and coding. That's kind of basic promise of model-driven architecture, model-driven methods, right? But actually, the same similar way, we can actually generate lots of documents in the right format that are good for customers, and spend less time on uh, tiny bits of uh, putting information in the right place, in the right format, and so on. And reusing and managing all the references and everything. Good. What else? So, so now I'm just a few glances about uh, managing a uh, huge project and challenges we had there. So just to, to be really practical about like model-driven model documentation management, right? Oh, okay. So it's fine. So it's all about model driven. It's all about managing a development process. And the basic approach, we want to build a toolbox for our customers, which are numerous. So we'll see there is a Bombardier, Volvo, uh, Scania, uh, Thales, uh, 
Tecne, uh, Nokia, and so they all have different uh, approaches, practices uh, for system engineering, for managing different things. So what they want, uh, they want like holistic system engineering, team collaboration over very huge and distributed models, right? Uh, global traceability for all the modeling artifacts and artifacts in the engineering process, right? And uh, we want to, to enhance uh, runtime monitoring and tracing and using specifications not only before we start developing a single then for, forget for specification, but all also to understand what happens currently in, in runtime uh, with, uh, by, uh, by looking and tracking back to the specifications. Right. Uh, so this is a promise project, and uh, it regroups many, many different countries, many people. So it's about like a 15 million uh, euros project with 27 companies, with the big ones, small ones, uh, universities. Uh, so just to show you a traceability matrix, let's say. So we have at one place case study providers from four different industrial domains. We have a lot of tool providers. They have like, different complementary skills. And we need to match the supply and demand in this research, researching project. So uh, there are requirements coming from use case providers like Nokia, for example. And there is tool features that come from different other tool providers. And we need to match all those things and track requirements from one side to the features from the other side and to provide consistent view and consistent framework out of it that can be helpful in different uh, tool chains from different comp companies. Right, so it is kind of a waterfallish project with lots of lots of lots of documents at different stages. So to, 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 to be delivered to, to, uh, to our sponsors, right? And so they track all those things. And this is very tedious because we don't have uh, a lot of money on management effort. We are there to research and develop things. We are not there to spend our lives in, in managing such a huge consortia. Right? So uh, we need to be smart, yeah? We're doing model-driven model tools. Why don't we eat our dog food? So why don't we use the same thing that we develop, right? So let's do that. Let's do that, and just to show you a few things, uh, from one side you have use case requirements, on the other side you have features and purposes and innovations done in different tool, tool uh, providers. So we want to match those things. So on one side we have a wish list to the uh, uh, Christmas father, okay, so what's, what would be Santa Claus, you know, if you know, I need this kind of, this is my ideal, uh, ideal process, ideal, ideal framework, this will, how, this will help me to be, to be better, faster, cheaper, and so on the other side, okay, we are working on this, on this, on this methods, and this will be available in uh, next release, how we can match, how we can help each other, how we can validate what I'm doing, uh, that, that I provide something really interesting um, uh, for your company on one side. And at the same, uh, what you can do actually for me that you, your uh, tools are really tailored for my, my, my demand. Right, and so in the middle we have a framework that actually should match the, this supply and demand and provide a consistent view of the, all the development. Right, so, yeah, it's a more complicated picture of the same thing. Let's go directly for, in the tools, like to the demo, right? So I have 12, exactly 12 minutes, and so it's very challenging to provide it, but here's our tool. Right, so it's UML editor from one side. So we will concentrate on this part. You have uh, case study requirements, right, from different com uh, companies with different uh, categories, right? So this is a kind of wish list, high level wish list for, from different com uh, companies. Uh, on the bottom side, you have uh, uh, like feature list or purpose list. And so we asked uh, various tool providers, there are 27 of them to use specific template for that. So we provided them a template, okay, you, you, you will uh, provide IDs, definition, criticality, how critical th that is. So, so this criticality can actually be specified by uh, tool providers, or sorry, case study providers. So when it will be available, is it available right now, or it planned in 12 months, or in 24 months, or will be available in final release, and then the status, it's available now or not. So it actually will help us to manage all those features and to see the roadmap of delivery of those features and the case study providers can see is it available now or it will be available in this release and can trace back. So what can I use now on, or how do I plan that I can use in 12 months, right? So uh, from that, um, so we have uh, synthetic views like uh, what are requirements for system engineering, right? So those are, those, those are all, all things that are actually synthesized from one side, the demand from, from case studies and uh, supply from the tool providers. Right, so the same thing for model traceability management and uh, runtime analysis, right? And uh, we have specific traceability uh, matrices that actually help us uh, to, to see actually wh which one satisfies which one. And the same thing uh, for uh, each particular um, tool, there is traceability matrix up to framework. And we can, from this point, uh, from this point we can actually easily uh, navigate uh, through the requirements with the uh, 
traceability matrices. So, uh, so this is kind of traceability view, when we go, okay, this is requirement for this three company, right? Uh, and this is actually features or future features that can, can, can actually help to satisfy this, this, this demand, right? And we can navigate and we actually can see which particular tool uh, use that or can, can be use, used, so which kind of uh, components it has, which kind of interfaces it has, can, can, how it can uh, interface with other uh, providers. Right, um, so, but we are here talking about documents, right? So how we can use that for the documents. And basically we provided specific tools uh, that which are built in for this particular, um, in this tool. So here we have uh, Megamart, and depending on where you are, you can ask the tool roadmap, uh, framework roadmap, interface specification, or the component specification, or, or the whole uh, architecture specification, for example, for the whole framework and all the tools. And if you go and see, for example, uh, let's, let's go and see some, uh, some framework roadmap, right? So I will do uh, some new, new roadmap, right? So, uh, okay, are we working? Yes, it's currently working. So, and here is, here is like status update on the roadmap. So, you can, as you can see, uh, it's already with the format of the project, so as, as the client would actually uh, require with all this different information. So, all these things are uh, generated, so we can see uh, when, what is the requirement, the definition, uh, which uh, tools will provide this particular functionality in the baseline version, or uh, in, which will, what, will be, what, what related features will be available in initial release, or intermediate release, or the final release, for example. And is it was done, uh, done, not done, planned, or in progress? Right, this kind of to check this road mapping there in this way. And so we can trace all those stuff. And if, for example, if you want to change something, we can actually change it here in the word file and then go, go back to the tool and put it back. So we can actually work with documents from this side. Right, uh, so what else, what else, what else? So the actually can go not only on requirements, but it actually can go uh, deeper in uh, specifying the architectural views, right? So uh, we have our framework, right? So here, uh, okay, how I can uh, concentrate on this one, yeah. And I can also uh, navigate through, uh, through the link editors uh, to see what, uh, what the tools are. So for interfaces, I can see uh, mm -hmm, tool components, common interfaces, what are the common interfaces to check uh, who is, for example, which is an Eclipse tool, for example, the basic question. Uh, how I can integrate or use together, who is inter uh, based on Eclipse? Okay, those, those are. So, and actually, each partner just specified a bit, uh, one piece of it, and then it is collected in the, in, in the whole, whole architecture so like, we can actually easily trace. So, uh, that way, and generate different documents that they can directly uh, give to the customer. customer. So, uh, and it's done in a collaborative manner. So, all 50 people can actually connect to the system. They have all the same tool because configuration management is managed. So, they actually download the project already pre configured and can generate various documents uh, in, a, in an easy way. And so they have only uh, four diagrams. Uh, let's, let's see the template uh, quickly. Uh, Toolset components, and uh, if we go to see tool components, so this is like template. So you have functional interfaces, subordinates, relation to framework, and deployment diagram, and purpose diagram, and so that's it. So you don't spend time, you don't learn you now, just use those things as prescribed by template, and then we have a consistent documentation. Right. That's it. So, uh, yeah, so that way we actually have, have a complete document, which I don't have time to, to show you. But if you want, you can, we, can, uh, we can talk after my presentation, and uh, I will show you the complete thing, so as a customer would see that. Right, uh, so let's go quickly back to, uh, yeah, so this is, this is one of the examples. Uh, okay, you see that. Right. So, so yeah, so, and also we, uh, with this tool, we integrate specific features, this kind of specific documents in the tool. So I mean, when my, my Lambda uh, um, developers comes to, to use the tool, he can just directly click on this one. He need, doesn't need to configure anything. Just click and get the right document in front of him. No configuration, no, just click. Right, demo, done, conclusions, advantages. So it's for me, as a technical coordinator, such a big project is a great, great, great coordination support because we have a common language we all work together on the same uh, model, so it's consistent documentation out of it. So it's, it gets synchronization among various part, uh, parties, like uh, case st study providers and tool providers. So synchronization is very important on such a big project, right? 
so and it's basically managed integrity. And this is what our sponsors say. It's uh, wonderful. So they never said so that before on such scale. So they like it very much. Limitations, as you see, uh, it's not a code. It's very high level. So there is boxes and arrows essentially. So we need uh, to keep this, this consistent and go probably further in, in, in describing the architectures. There is a certain learning curve. And actually, we have specialists from all the ranges, from the drivers or embedded code or HDL up to whatever Java developers. And so they're not necessarily fluent in, in UML. So um, it was, we had actually to spend some time on learning. And so restricting everything to really four things you should actually carry for, for this documentation. We can actually add more. And as soon as they learn these four things, we can add more. And so that will be helpful. Uh, sometimes synchronization problems, okay, uh, okay, we both checked in, we both touched this particular model, we really have a consistency, how to manage that, many times it's manual. Uh, styling of the documents, uh, it's great help, but few styles are not available, we cannot do everything we wanted with documents. And still there is manual efforts to add the text to the tool, I mean, basically the text, uh, that it comes not from the model itself, but what the people typed about the components or about requirements, so there is still manual effort, but it's actually... Uh, we actually gain some productivity on reusing these parts in various, various documents and managing consistency. Conclusions. So it's very, uh, overall very, very useful thing. Uh, we continue to use it and we will uh, uh, adopt that more. And it's already used in my two other projects. And so uh, basically it saves me <laughs> so much of time you can't believe it. So, uh, so I want to go from 50% of spending my time on, on documentation to 10% as some people do. So, and I hope it, it's feasible. Right. Future work, so we work more on integration, and this will be great help to see uh, what kind of interfaces can be used, right? Uh, so tool chains for validations, okay, um, I have a case study, a case study from Volvo, I'm using this, this particular tool, in which way should I use that? And how, how to put that in documents? So we can use VPN for that, right? And so there is so many ways we can use this model right now because we have uh, a library of requirements and components all together, so it's, for documentation, it's a huge, huge thing. Right, so thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you, Andrei. First of all, it was very interesting because, for example, we are working in a very similar direction. But uh, for me, it is interesting. Do you have some uh, graphical editors for behavior, and can you generate the final object code from diagrams? Uh, in final one of your in this first tool, pictures, uh, you promised. I, I promise that we have tools that can do that, and they are in the framework. So, uh, so in this framework, there will be tools that can actually generate those things. For, in this particular demo, uh, Madelio cannot really do that for the so moment. So, here you concentrated only on specification. It's only specification right now, but it can be augmented if you like uh, to generating. We actually do generation with other tools and other projects. We do generation, for example, for business process automation. Yeah. So we generate websites. I know what does it mean? and we have our own editors for Bopman, and the most interesting thing is how to generate, for example, documentation flow, or mm. even uh, industrial flow in some yeah. plant or something like that. Mm. It can be used not only for documentation, for different purposes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, Bopman is a quite useful thing, so our, my previous improvements life or research life, I use that for... And you mentioned that you have sponsors. Tools. Yes. Is it a secret? No, uh, uh, European Commission. Are? European uh? Commission and countries. Like yes. it's half funded, I mean, we have like 20, well, for our company, 25% funding. So you percent received funding. this uh, support from your previous We group. have a grant, yeah, we have a grant. Uh, that uh, sponsors like a uh, quarter of our sp sp uh, costs in this project mm -hmm. uh, with real money, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, and, then, and actually, this documentation is for them to track that we're doing something in the project, not just like having, having great meetings. Uh, one of the documentation problems was that we couldn't like um, generate different documentation documents for different like stakeholders. stakeholders. Right. Is this so? Here? It's gonna be useful. So I mean, we prescribe like you can have um, let's say reference document with lots of diagrams or diagram book. So or you can spend like add uh, either you just uh, put high level comments or you put all the comments in the document. So that can be a kind of summary document or a lengthy document. You can put. Uh, for example, if you concentrate on an analyst, you will only put requirements tables and traceability tables. You won't spend anything on architecture. If you work, work with, with developers, it will be probably vice versa. So you will uh, more concentrate and pick only architectural things on certain level of details and not the other things. Okay, Please. Just one. More now. Я не совсем понял, все-таки кто ответственен, кто вносит изменения в эту систему? Это для разработчиков, для тестировщиков, технических писателей, продукт-менеджера или для всех из них? It's actually for, for all uh, 
technical or non technical or managerial people in the project uh, who wants actually to talk together. So, requirement, so case study providers, so technical people from Nokia, from Bombardier, from Thales that write down their wish, wish list for the tools that sh should support them with this process, right? And on the other side, you have tool providers, the technical people from tool providers. Uh, who thinks, okay, this is a feature list, uh, this is uh, things which we are going to develop, this is already available on the tool, and we can match both sides, basically. Slide with a triangle. Yes, uh, triangle, magic triangle. I'm, I'm, starting, I'm starting talking like a business coach, right? Magic triangle, where is it? No, no, magic triangle was somewhere here. Yes. Понятно. Okay. И еще вот такой вопрос. Вот все-таки вот как определенная проблема стоит в том, что в документе что-то написано, но это не соответствует реальности. Ah, this is, this is, this is very good question. This is, this is вот, essential я, question. Я считаю, что было бы хорошо двигаться в том направлении, что, допустим, создается документ, ну, скажем, на этапе компилируется PDF-файл. Mm -hmm. И в момент, когда он компилируется, ну, как бы на, на, на каждое содержательное предложение или там на, на какие-то из них mm -hmm. прогоняется тест. То есть... So, we all moving there. Yes. So for, for, for English speaking people, so the idea is that we actually want that our specification and requirements are executable and actually generate tests out of these uh, requirements. And this would be the ideal world. And uh, we all go there and there's lots of lot of research about that. But 99% of people doing just list of requirements in Excel. So this is the state of the art, state of the practice right now that are somehow linked. And so, I mean, we're trying to move there, but it's so much time and difficulty because when you do this thing, you actually develop your system twice, basically. Your specification, specification is executable by unit system. So, and I mean, in some, some cases, it's done that way. For example, in uh, uh, airspace, it's done that way. So it's actually lots of risks and it's done that way. In automotive, probably it will be the same thing very soon. And last slide. Yes, last one. Yes. So, some other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Andrei. Thank you. Thank you very much.